And now we're going to do another example of term symbols because this can be a particularly difficult concept to grasp the first time around in physical chemistry. So in this example I've got some atom which has uh, completely filled subshells all the way up into a D subshell. Could be 3D, could be 4D, 5D, etc. Some transition metal that would be. And it's got a D9 configuration. So it could be 3D9, could be uh, what copper would be if it weren't an exception to the standard rules. But uh, anything with a D9 configuration could fit the example that I'm about to talk about. Okay, so we've got uh, nine electrons and we've got 10 spin orbitals in a D subshell, five spatial orbitals with values of M sub L going from plus two to minus two. Uh, L being 2 for a D subshell. And then we want to figure out how many different ways we can fit 9 electrons into 10 spin orbitals. So that is 10 choose 9, 10 factorial over 9 factorial times 10 minus 9 factorial. And when you work that out, you get that there are 10 possibilities. <clears throat> and that makes sense because D9 is uh, going to give us the same term symbols as D1, but instead of having a single electron in each of the 10 individual spin orbitals, we're going to have the single absence of an electron in each of these orbitals. And you'll see that uh, for D1 and D9, if you work it out, we actually get the same term symbols. Same thing for uh, P0 and P6, P1 and P5, uh, P2 and P4. Uh, same thing for D0 and D10, D1 and D9, D2 and D8, uh, etc. D, D3, D7, D4, D6. Each of those pairs is going to get the same term symbols uh, just based off of how the math of this works out. Okay, so we've figured out how many different determinants we should have, how many different configurations. There are 10, and I drew all 10 of them here. The next step is to figure out what the values of M sub L and M sub S are for each of these 10 configurations. So the individual d orbitals have M sub L values ranging from plus 2 to minus 2. And in each of these cases, we just add up the values for all 10 electrons here. And if you do that, you'll find that M sub L for this first one here is going to be plus 2. The only one that's unpaired is we have a plus 2 over here, which doesn't have a corresponding minus 2 over here. All the other ones are canceled out. So you get plus 2 net. Uh, one electron loan there, plus 1. And then you can see I've put that pattern of where the missing electron is. So going down the line we get 0, minus 1, minus 2. You should be able to convince yourself that this is in fact correct by adding up the value of M sub L for all, ten, for all 9 electrons in the shell as well. Then for M sub S, uh, in each of these cases you have four, 5 spin up and 4 spin down electrons in the first 5. And in the last five, you have five spin down and four spin up. So if you add up a value of plus one half for the spin up, minus one half for the spin down, we're going to get plus one half for the first five, a net of plus one half spin, that one spin up electron extra. And in the last five, there's one extra spin down electron, giving us minus one half for all the values of M sub S. Okay, so those are those values. Next step, we want to mark what is the maximum for M sub S and M sub L. For M sub S, the maximum value we get is 1 half. Let me draw that to better than that. For M sub L, the maximum value we get is 2. So that means that our maximum value of S and maximum value of L will similarly be 1 half and 2. So our possible values of S and L, S is a half integer growing down from its maximum value all the way to 0. So you can't subtract 1 from 1 half and still have a number above 0. So S is only going to be 1 half. For L, we start at 2 and we decrease all the way down to 0 by integers. We can have 2, 1, or 0, equivalently D, P, or S. 
Okay, so given these possible values of S and L, all possible combinations of term symbols are possible. So um, for an S of 1 half, our multiplicity, our 2S plus 1, is going to equal 2 times 1 half is 1, plus 1 is 2. So that's going to be a doublet. Our pos and that's our only possible value of S. That's our only possible multiplicity. For L, we can have D, P, and S. So our possible term symbols are doublet D, doublet P, and doublet S. All right, so we want to go from what is possible to what is. So we start with the term symbol which has the largest value of L, and that's D here, has a value of L equals 2. So we're looking for, we have L equals 2, S equals 1 half. We're looking for a term symbol with M sub L equals plus 2, and M sub S equals plus 1 half, in order for there to be a dovelet D uh, term symbol which exists. So we look over here, and that's the first one I've got. So that is a check. I do have a determinant which is consistent with what I would need to have in order to have a doublet D term symbol. So we will have a we will have a doublet D. So I'll go ahead and list that on my list of confirmed term symbols down here. Doublet D. Okay, then which uh, determinants are we going to cross out due to the presence of a doublet D term symbol? So for L, for L equals 2, my values of M sub L are going to be plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, and minus 2. For an S of 1 half, my values of M sub S are going to be plus 1 half and minus 1 half. Okay, so it's just a matter of making sure that I have all possible combinations of M sub L and M sub S taken care of. So how many determinants am I looking for? The number of determinants I'm looking for is going to be 2S plus 1 times 2L plus 1. That's how many determ determinants it takes to match out all possibilities for M sub L and M sub S for, the po for all possible pairs of those two. And that is going to equal, for my present case, 2s plus 1, with s being a half, is 2. 2l two plus 1 is going to be 5. That's going to be 10 determinants. So this doublet d term symbol is responsible for 10 of these configurations here. And you'll notice that I only have 10 total here. So in fact, all of my configurations here are contained within this doublet D term symbol. This doublet D term symbol accounts for all 10 possible uh, electronic states here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and demonstrate that for purposes of demonstration. 2 plus 1 half, that's that one. 1 1 half, 0 1 half, minus 1 1 half, minus 2 1 half. Okay, those are all the possible values of m sub s plus 1 half with m sub l. Plus 2 minus 1 half, plus 1 minus 1 half, 0 minus 1 half, minus 1 minus 1 half, and minus 2 minus 1 half. Okay, so we counted for all 10. There are 5 arrows going up from here, 5 from here, and 2 arrows going out from each of these values here. So we've accounted for every possibility of M sub L and M sub S that we should get given a doublet D term symbol. So our doublet D is in fact the entire list of term symbols because we have crossed out all possible uh, determinants, all possible electron configurations within that 3D uh, subshell, or 4D, or whichever one it is, uh, this D9. Okay, then if we want to include values of j as well, then we want to go from remembering that you know that j is less than or equal to the sum of l and s, and it is greater than or equal to the different the mag magnitude of the difference between them. So for d, our, remember our l equals two, s equals one half. So that's going to give us possibilities which include 2 plus 1 half. If 
5 halves, and 2 minus 1 half, which is 3 halves. And those are the only possible values of j allowed. So our term symbols including j is doublet d 5 halves and doublet d 3 halves. So uh, just one more thing to show, we have we have these 10 uh, individual electron configurations here, uh, but we have two, these two term symbols here. So if we ask ourselves, should there be 10 states represented in these two term symbols here? There should be, and in fact there are. And we can show that by saying that the value of m sub j goes from j to minus j by integer values. So for our doublet d 5 halves here, our possible values of m sub j would be 5 halves, 3 halves, 1 half, minus 1 half, minus 3 halves, all the way down to minus 5 halves. And if you notice, there are six total possibilities in there. So there are six states inside of that doublet uh, d 5 halves term symbol, six possibilities there for our m sub j quantum number for that atom. Then for our doublet d 3 halves there, m sub j can equal 3 halves, 1 half, minus 1 half, or minus 3 halves. And you notice there are four cases there. So we have six up here, four possible down there. So between these two term symbols, there are 10 distinct quantum states which are possible. Remember, a quantum state is one which has a distinct set of quantum numbers. So m sub j is a quantum number for a given atom. And if our atom has a d9 configuration, there are 10 possible ways to arrange uh, 10 to arrange nine electrons within the 10 spin orbitals or five spatial orbitals of a D subshell. And those are represented within the doublet D five halves. There are six states which are six values of that quantum number which are possible there. Or you could have J equals three halves and then there are four possible values of M sub J there representing the 10 total uh, possible states we can get with a D nine configuration.